We got Ken on the table today, dude. It's not going to be able to just kind of hide back there now, Ken. Not going to be behind just an absolute wall of equipment. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You okay. have said that. You do Better feel like you're out. Game. Yeah. I'm excited, dude. We get that Ben guy out of here. We just took a flight to Detroit. Lovely city. God. Yeah, we went <laughs> actually past uh, 8 Mile where Eminem grew up. Really? Yeah, and it's like a road. It's like driving across university. It's like 8 Mile Road. The craziest part was that we had $75,000 in cash. In a backpack. It was just me, Ryan, and Ben. In a rental car. That it's is a tough lot place of, to be. A lot of money. You know, basically everywhere we walked, I just kept it on me because I don't know if the car was going to get broken into or yeah, what. Yeah, you put so the backpack like, like forwards. No, I just walked around normal just with the backpack. Luckily, mm -hmm. we don't look like high rollers or anything. Not that we are, but we didn't look like we'd have seventy five thousand yeah, no cash giveaways. on us. I would not have left it in the car either. So, anyways, yeah, that was that was interesting seeing uh, Detroit City. Nice place though. We had not one bad encounter, but we You're were right. we were told nice. not to go certain. You know, you go down the wrong street. Basically, it's like the movies is how the locals that we were hanging with described it. Like if you went down the wrong street, they'll do like the bird call and shit, and like yeah. they'll like hold you up. And there's been some horrible things that happen to people if they went down the wrong neighborhood. You I, know, took a wrong turn. I gotta imagine it's probably more if you're not supposed to be in that neighborhood. Yeah, like you, I, I have a hard time believing like Granny and Granny. Grammy and Grandpa could take a wrong turn, and they're like, "Nice, let's get them." They're driving a 2011 Buick. Like, let's hold them up. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, it's true. But I, but I mean, still, I, apparently the cops don't even go to those neighborhoods. But it was interesting because we go past the Ford factory. It was massive, massive, I massive. Bet. I bet. Like I can't even describe how big it was. And then there's all these abandoned houses, like everywhere. It was just really interesting. It was it was such a strange city. And then, like, we couldn't find food half the time. It was it was, it was just a lot of houses. Do you guys ever, like, Big look factory. on Zillow, see how much those houses cost? They're, like, nothing. But yeah, like, it, it, I looked on Zillow, and it was, like, just a couple thousand dollars to, like, a couple wow. hundred dollars. Yeah, okay. yeah. You, <laughs> so you buy the homes. What, what people are doing out there is they buy, like, the whole neighborhood, bulldoze it, build new ones. People come. It's just a, a, a repeating cycle. These Then the, you know, houses that are old, they just get abandoned. Then right. another guy does it and just repeats like that. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, it was cool being in in uh, Motor City. You know, kind of reignited my love for cars. You, you lost know. it, huh? No, but you know, you just kind of forget about it when you're in the winter and you're just driving a stock pickup around, like <laughs> myself. True? Which uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but Post Malone made a hat and he had my <laughs> truck on it. He had my truck. It's actually that famous yeah, of a build. Might have to bring it to it's SEMA. The, I love it because it's like I look at it and go like. What does that mean? That's just that's a the stock Ford just Raptor on stop. it. And then it says <laughs> I thought it was Austin great. Post Malone. Well, the dude, it. the dude understands a good looking truck, and uh, <laughs> I'm not surprised. He's a car guy. Uh, but yeah, I've been kind of itching to get the Jeter out, and it made me wonder, Mike, how's your Subaru going, man? It's going good. Kind of forgot good. you even own that thing. Yeah, it basically is just like. Yeah, if you guys have ever been to like a bonfire and it gets good, the more wood you put into it, that's how <laughs> mine is, but with money. Right. Yeah. Yeah, dude. You're going to have a hell of a fucking super. <laughs> no, dude. I actually, I have like a list of the, the parts I put on it, but like I crashed it, but there, there was some rust. I was like, yeah, let's fix the rust. Yeah. I mean, here. once you start, yeah. where do you uh, stop? You know, blew out like two of the coilovers. So I got like KW. So if you guys best know ones. about that, yeah. they're like the best Good ones. Light. And then I'm like. Having the fender flares like blended into the body. God damn. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's that how, nuts. Sweet. how deep into this thing are you? Balls. So you bought <laughs> you bought this vehicle Plastic. for ten thousand, I remember. 10, Which and is a good deal. It was deal. a fantastic deal. Yeah. But then got, how much do you think you have in it now? You gotta have four Subarus. You well, could have yeah, bought the car four yeah, times I got over. Sixteen K into the STI swap among a few other cars. Which was what, parts. like two years ago? Yeah. Okay. And then probably another like twenty K into it now. So almost five times over, yeah. so but like it's going to be a hell of a Subaru. Yeah, it yeah. Is I mean, a it's, sick, it's a rare 50. one, though. Yeah. It's one of the most rare Subarus, in my opinion. I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah, like new the control Sonic arms, yellow. new control arms, new hubs, Everything. Uh, new headlights, new taillights. Yeah, repainted. Uh, I was going to ask if you repainted it. Carb That's awesome. Yeah, carbon fiber, uh, front lip, side skirts, rear diffuser, front splitter. Uh, new intercooler. <laughs> new, Jesus, the whole everything. Everything. Are, are new you, timing belt, new timing belt cover, new, uh, I want equal length exhaust, which, you know, kind of defeats the whole Subaru rumble, but makes it sound more race car. So it's just, yeah, I got some help from some sponsors and uh, make some, some money. money on Snapchat now. Damn. So yeah, that's no helping. Kidding. Spam and Snapchat. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be, 
like like I said, I'm gonna give it to my kids, but like yeah, it's like now a forever I really, now you <laughs> really are getting yeah. into your kids. You could list it for sale, sixty grand, two thousand two <laughs> Subaru WRX. No, it's, yeah, it probably as it sits once it's done is maybe worth twenty five. Yeah, it's you like know? one of those yeah. guys be like over fifty k invested, yeah. and they got the poor thing listed for like eighteen grand. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. But I had it twisted. I thought for some reason your neighbor was doing it in his garage. Oh man! And then like I was like, oh, that's good. He found like a guy, you know, kind of just to just get her get her back on the road. And then I started hearing about all the stuff you're doing to it. I'm like, oh, Damn, this, this is, is quite the neighborhood project. Yeah, yeah. But no, it. My neighbor, he works at a fab uh, uh, a restoration shop. It's mm-hmm. just him and like his boss Corey. Shout out Corey's Customs. They're uh, oh, so he is still working on it. Yeah, like, but it is interesting. There's so many things that I probably could have got away with not doing and just doing myself. Like I could put the intercooler on myself. However. It's in the shop, and it's like they're just, they're just working they have on the it. whole thing torn apart. Yeah, so it's like there is there is something worth, you know. There's mm-hmm. so many parts I've always wanted on the car that like I I gotta you know take well. take a random Wednesday night all night to and put, it, put on. it on just to get the yeah. intercooler on. So just have the professionals that's, that's do it. That's fun yeah. to do, honestly. It I'm, is. I'm planning on putting some parts on uh, the Evo. I I just had them for years that I just have sitting in a box. Now that we got the, you're saying it's the fun two to do. Posts. Yeah. yeah, it's fun yeah. putting it on when you're just doing it by yourself, though. You're, like, you're not even like doing it for a video because you don't have like this pressure of like, like you got every, everyone here, you got a f- camera guy, and you're like, oh, I feel like bad. Yeah. You know, you want to go, you can kind of just chill and do it, especially when you got a two post lift. That's a luxury. Yeah. I think it's fun when you want to do it. Yeah. Like it, like putting the lights in my truck when I want to do it. It was really fun, but then I kind of got sick of it, and then it was yeah. like the worst thing ever. I'm yeah, just when like, it's I not want going well, it sucks. With, yeah, sucks, exactly. Yeah. Or you don't have time. But uh, isn't it weird thinking so going, you know, everything's kind of going electric when it comes to modifying the cars. Like, Dude. you can't really buy parts. You just make them you know? lighter. It's like well, you just, just basically, visual. yeah, like yeah. visually or like obviously uh, with the chassis or suspension, but like in terms of like, increasing power you just reflash it basically yeah, it's, yeah, all, but it's all software you just yeah but that's not that can, exciting can like, you it, unlock like, your tesla to make it faster no and like as far as i know like if you, really you do can. anything to like the software or the parts like you're just you just brick it like really? it just becomes like nothing can they bring it back i i'd assume if I you bring it to a They'll tesla it, person yeah. they can probably fix it but like what are you gonna do? Like you have to swap out a computer. Elon's got that shit on lock. Honestly, though, like there's like I don't look at the Teslas and be like, I wish they made noise. Like no offense yeah. to the Tesla owners, but they're not like the like I don't look at it and think like that's a hot rod. And I think that <laughs> there's something cool about the Cybertruck being so odd. Mm-hmm. That's definitely the coolest Tesla. I had that rental Kia down in Utah, and it made noise. Like there's a speaker that made noise when you're driving it, and it was the most annoying thing. I'd like yeah. figure out how to turn it off. It's just so tough to look cool in an electric car, in my opinion. But Ken, I still am torn on that. I I just find it very <laughs> hard to believe that you just showed up and they go, "Hey, this is the car we're giving you an electric Kia." Oh, like, it, you had to have chosen you, that. No, it said manager special could be gas or electric, and there was like no cars There's left. There's no when we chance that, up. that they just send someone. Hey, you're getting an electric vehicle because that would be such a pain for oh, anyone. I, I Which was it was on, running out of battery the whole time. I was looking online, and Hertz just does that, and it's the shittiest thing. Imagine ever. doing that to like a. My grandpa Ron. Bro. Yeah, they, he would. I mean, he would be able to do it, but he would be like, what the f- I gotta well, I like, learn a whole new thing. But it kind of goes like, back, Where do I go? Like all this. It goes back to what you just said. Like, there's a lot of electric vehicles out there now. So like, I don't the, know, man. You know, I before think, think if if, if, he, just if they would have put him in a test, <laughs> no, it, it it sucked, and it was the I compl- I sent an email to Hertz. I was like, this is the <laughs> stupidest thing you can do. Did you really? Like if you, if if somebody I got made email? fun of publicly, if can somebody wants email? an electric car, they should specifically say, I want an electric car. But if you're going for like <laughs> just the email. the cheapest manager special, just give me what you give me. That should not be like electric cars should not be on that. Can I yeah. see this email, Ken? It should be a freaking. Can I see this? I, it was like a, a response form thing. Mm-hmm. Give me I don't a, know. I'm just not buying. It, it was man. like, the, the, hey, <laughs> hey, how was your I, rental? Give us your it's feedback. It's fine that you were like, I'm gonna try a new elect EV out. You know, uh, yeah, you're gonna try well, a new I, Tesla. I, I just Kia. think it, it's saying a lot that he owns a, has owned multiple Teslas and drove an electric car and is now shitting on it. He's saying he does the Kia yeah, version. It, it sucks. The Kia version. Yeah. yeah, dude, I've been saying because like I, I get a little flack from my electric Hummer. For sure, probably that's, deserve it. it. I it's forget fine. you even own I, that. That's thing, the dude. thing. Really? Like, no offense. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you do deserve it, but 
If you it's got, so happens. You get forget it. you even you have to park thing. in the corner of the parking lot and kind I of just hide it. away. You know, it's <laughs> just hey, kind of this you know little brick forget? sitting in the corner, dude. <laughs> you know like why for you forget? Be, seriously, because, yeah, it is. It's sitting in the corner, and when when he takes off to drive home, the TRX home, we know Ryan's going home yeah, or, or leaving. Yeah, because it's freaking loud. And when you leave in the Hummer, we don't know ever because you can't hear it. That's, that's yeah. probably a big reason of it. The edit that Dalton made was freaking was pretty sick. fire. So whenever I get a bunch of flack on it, I always go like, oh, I'm, I'm not a save the planet electric guy. I just like it because of the power and it's cool. And now I finally come to a conclusion, Stradman and I actually did, that if it came with the supercharged V8 in it, oh, it would oh, be so 10,000 times cooler. Yeah, I would that would be one. the coolest car ever. I would want one. If in the front it had a supercharged LS. I've yeah. said it for years. I've always thought H2 Hummers were, were cool. Like Since I was a little kid, which I didn't understand how much they costed back then, <laughs> but I saw, I remember seeing one and sitting in the back of my mom's car going to school, and I was like, my first car is going to be a gonna Hummer. Be a Hummer. Right. And my money. mom was like, oh, yeah, I bet, you know, like... Yeah, you no, they were just one, badass. Dude. Well, you know, I, I always kind of wanted one, and then when you got yours, I was like, "Damn, this uh, it's too late. There's, it's just it's too, too late. Shitty. They don't work anymore. There like, are still was, some absolute cherries out there, and they, they are like, asking the appropriate. They want like price sixty grand, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, for wait. like a for like a that's in, let's say a yeah, forty thousand mile Hummer H two sixty grand. That's that, pretty that, crazy. That's like what it costs new, which that was a shit ton of money, dude, back then. For a vehicle, but uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. Instead of your Raptor, that'd be a pretty cool daily rig for you. An H two, yeah, a mint H two would kind of suck. I mean, it's just they're so it, there becomes a point where it's like the time is I drove, has moved on. I yeah. drove on. time has moved <laughs> well, on, like, and it's hard going back in time. If you and, say and a mint H two sucks, <sighs> I'd have to drive it. Yeah. Ryan's, it was Ryan's was beat. Yeah, mine was beat. Still had heated seats though. The heat didn't yeah. work that well, but. I've been kind of going back and forth on like, you know, is it time to move on from the from the GTR? Mm. But it's literally so perfect. It's got everything. I want to I want to take I it out right now, but the roads are sure. There's one car. Crazy. I mean, we've gone over this. There's one car that you belong in if it's not a GTR and that's an R8. I'll I'll say that, bro. Like, like R8s are just too like They just rolled the last one off the assembly line. It was yellow. It's kind of ugly, that's not gonna lie. Oh, really? <laughs> but yeah, they just rolled the No, it's it's an R8. It's sick. They just rolled the last one off the assembly line and it's just you can just feel like the sadness in the comment section. Really? Yeah, like, you know, they have quite the Bum. I just feel like like when I envision a guy driving an R8, most of the time I feel like it's like a businessman in like a suit. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. I don't know if I'm. Yeah, you're right. The GTR is like a punk version of yeah. an R8. I just like the fact that it's cheaper. It can it can beat up on the the Lambo, the R8. Be faster than Ben. Yep, that's tough. And I think like the R8 is like the the Huracan is like the kind of the suited version, and the R8 is like the tuner version. Really? Yeah. I feel the opposite. I feel like Huracan is typically like the more punk. He does have a point in that people gen they tune R eights. Like if you're like yeah, a they, tuner, yeah, they, no, it's the same exact supercharger. Yeah, yeah. 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 and then they that's what's cool. You can put a I follow a few companies that you know they're sheepy race. I can't remember the other one, but they just make you take the intake manifold off and you just put the so, supercharger on and flash it, and that is it. And you I get like, like two fifty su- extra horse. Superchargers are cool, but no, yeah, I feel not, like turbo. they're not turbo nearly. is just but trumped to, them. Like I would never even consider to a twin turbo. Yeah. It's like triple the price is of it? putting that one and also supercharger on. I've owned three supercharged cars, and they just a turbo sounds better. Yeah. It does. Like, I mean, the supercharger works really well. It's fucking fast, but it just, it sounds yeah, better it turbo. I mean, then, because a pro charger is not is still a version of a supercharger since it's yeah. belt driven. But that's what's interesting, too. Like, regular turbo still sounds way better to me than a pro charger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, Jake's Mustang was cool. That's, like, the only experience I've really had with a pro charger. But it's it just sits there and idles, like, woo, 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 like kind of just loud. And then... When you go, it's just a bunch of air versus turbos. You get that whistle. Pro chargers don't seem to be used very much anymore. In I my see, opinion. Like, like I feel like I see them a lot, and I'm like, oh, really? I almost look, you know, see a Corvette, Pro Charge Corvette, yeah. bunch of horsepower, 900 something, whatever, and then I'm like, ah, it's Pro Charge. It'd be sicker if it was turboed. Yeah. Yeah. You see that guy that uh, he was in that Z06 vet, and like the cops have him boxed in. You guys just see that? Yeah, video? I did. And then uh, they pushed him, and then he <laughs> drove off. He escaped. So apparently that guy's got an Instagram account called The Stolen Z06. 
and he's wow. been in, I believe, Charlotte. I can pull Have it up they here. Caught him yet? Was that the black one? Yeah, that was a black Crazy. one. And he no, no plates on it. Like C8? Yeah, uh, C7. C7. The best. His bio says video game player, and all he posts is just videos of him outrunning the cops and like toying with the cops on his Instagram. How do you get away with that? Dang. How do they not like? Uh, send I can't a- imagine he's gonna get away with it for, for long. But still, just just the fact that he's able to make like multiple posts about it. When you're breaking the law like that. I just don't yeah, there's just no way you can get away with it for that long. Shopify, it is the best way to sell online, period. We created our website, cboystv.com, with Shopify, and we absolutely love it. It's easy to customize, it's easy to design with no coding needed, and it's easy to manage orders from anywhere using their app. We're not the only ones who love Shopify, though. 5% of e-commerce in the United States is powered by Shopify. They've got an endless supply of third-party apps to help make your shopping or store building experience even better. But really, my favorite part about Shopify is they make it simple to sell online for anyone they've got easy to design product pages with no coding required and if you don't have your own brand but you want to sell online with shopify collective you can curate products to sell from the brands that you love giving your customers even more options and variety and your business more sales So running and growing a business means getting the insights that you need wherever you are. And with Shopify's single dashboard, you can manage orders, shipping, and payments from anywhere using their mobile app as well. We love using Shopify, and you will too. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash wide open, which is all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash wide open now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash wide open. Mando is clinically proven to control odor for 72 hours, which is a pretty long time. Probably too long to go without a shower, but hey, it has happened to us all at some point in our lives. When we're out filming videos, you never know what we're going to get into. First, we're out in the dunes and Glamis, and then the same night, somehow we end up in a fancy Vegas hotel. So for us, 72-hour odor control is something that I really love about Mando. Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. Comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash or deodorant wipes and free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you guys get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code and that equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Use code wide open at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. That's code wide open at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O. D-O.com. And what's the one guy? There's the the one guy that's like in Europe that's super famous. He's like named the Ghost Rider or something. Like he kind of was the first one I've seen. This is like almost 10 years ago. And he would just go out on his motorcycle. A little easier to do in a motorcycle. Yeah. And a lot easier probably. And just And toilet. just, yep, just run from yeah. the, that was his content. Wow. Because when you're on a crotch rocket, it's like yeah. not even close. Especially, Especially for a city, cop car. You just escaped. Speaking, away. I just got a... My R6, but uh, Speaking I won't of. be doing any of that. Yeah. That that bike good. is so good looking. Isn't it cool? Clean. That is a yeah. good cool? find. I had to pay extra for that, I was that, just going to say, The CJ R6s actually, are going up in value. They are. He, he got a, a 2013. And he, no, 2017. 2017. Oh, wow. My bad. Uh, Four. 13, 13 grand. Which is more than you could have bought. Like, you, you know that a brand new R7, not as cool, is like 9.5? Yeah. <laughs> and then well, like a brand new CBR is yes, like still like, like 13, 11. 12, oh, okay. 12, 5. But yeah, no, I, I considered it, but I was like, ah, I'd rather just have an R6. I feel like we've got this thing oh, yeah. going. It's got to be an R6. And that's actually a pretty fair price. They just have all gone up. So sad. Um, I think, uh, yeah, everyone that watches the channel is going to be like heck yeah dude you yeah. got an r6 i just got to keep evan off it i was laughing i, I leave and next thing i know i'll be on the track flying <laughs> through the air he's just what he's used to yeah dude. he just do it like normal yeah. you guys see the the reel of a dude he's like yeah selling an r6 up. and then he sees like this c boys rolling up with yeah. Evan yeah, put gear. that in here that's funny yeah that is funny okay so here going back to the stolen z06 guy here's the video of him supposedly getting caught what the fuck's this cop doing? So yeah, this they dumb. had him pin, but then they push him and help him push out of the way. Yeah, you'd think they would just I, I think this guy moved in the front. I can't really see because he's not on the gas yet. But this guy in the front here is pretty casual. Oh, he does kind of push him out. Yeah, he pushed him out. He's just gone. Wow. <laughs> in front of the Ross, dressed for less. And they could have just left him. So, yeah, why didn't they just break the window? He tried, like, kicking it. He did that weak-ass sidekick. Yeah, that was dumb. This guy is a maniac. This is obviously in California. 
Like he's he's got the GoPro and everything. The 360 yeah. GoPro yeah. on the Hanging back. Hanging off the back. It's always a sick shot. I mean, in this one, dude, he's in the rain. Is this thing like tuned up or what? Uh, is it just a factory Z06? There's been some debates in the comments if it's uh, stock or tuned, but it does shoot flames when he's on the gas. So you would think it'd yeah, be. Yeah, it's definitely, that's not stock. Yep, he's getting lit up. What's he going to do, pull over? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I don't think Probably so. not. He's got 89,000 like, likes on this. Yeah, I mean, he's, so he's kind of blowing up. So he stops. Cop he's going to wait till he gets all the way to the door. Smart. Smart moves. Listen to that thing, though. Yeah, he's got a cam. Oh, look. He's just got the street. Yep. See ya. And he's gone. Damn, in the rain that is cops. actually Pretty sketch, dude. But it, this guy's committed to that life. He's got to do it whether it's rain or snow. A lot of them don't chase him. I'm sure they're just like this guy's a hazard. Like if I start chasing him, he's just gonna. He's gonna. Hurt they know. Somebody. Yeah. If it's they're not worth it. Aware of what he does at all, they they know that he's not gonna quit. They're gonna catch him eventually. I guess I can see why people do it, but that and then where people are like weaving, bobbing and weaving through traffic, it's something that I enjoy watching, but I can't I can't get behind because it just seems so dangerous to everybody else, you know? Uh, right. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the C seven zero six. Just pop it up on the screen, picture of them. I well, used to think they were super cool. I'd rather have a C six. I mean, I'm still with you. Like I think the C seven zero six is just the most gorgeous car. Really? Like almost, nice. almost ever. And I don't know. I feel like I've just seen so many of them. I just they're just kind of lame. It's just I, so common at this yeah. point. Even the like, it's not special. You see them everywhere, and it's just kind of like. <sighs> but I do feel that way about a regular C8. Yeah, you see them everywhere. But like a Z06, C7. Obviously, if it's a ZL1, dude, they're they're just they're skyrocketing in price. Oh yeah, well ZL1, obviously, my grandpa. Uh, not my grandpa Ron. That's when I fell in love with that car. Yeah. So he had an orange ZL1. Orange. It was a manual. It so was sick. uh like the basically yeah. the last year they ever made manuals. It had this track Big pack rain. on it. It yeah. was insane. He had owned so many Corvettes. He got it at MSRP, and then it was immediately worth like pretty much double. Yeah. I think it was worth double. And uh, no, I think it was probably worth like two hundred. Anyways, I don't know house, about at the time, but no, now, no, now it, it's yeah. Crazy. Well, anyways, his house burnt down, and he didn't have uh, he didn't have insurance on it because it burnt down in the winter. He just wasn't driving it. And it was sitting it. there. He was taking insurance off. Took oh, a th- lost all that money. It's just gone. Like it, it honestly, it's, even I'm sick about it. Yeah, because it's just like it was just gone. And, and that, that was like one of many cars that he lost in that fire, wasn't it? Yeah, he lost one other really expensive car, but. It was very unfortunate. And it's interesting how that happens because I remember like taking my cars off uh, in the winter and insurance agent was like, are you sure, you know, you can leave it on the lowest, whatever. And then if, I don't know, if if your garage burns down, I'm like, that's not going to happen. Yeah, take it off. off. Save me the $50 a month. Nope. I, you got to put storage insurance on it. Yeah. hundred percent. But uh, I think after that, that was a pretty good eye opener for us. Yeah. A hundred percent. No, I just like the C6s because they're just more core, I feel like. Yeah. There's something cool. It's like having like an old Subaru versus a new one. I think the new ones are lame because it's just like they're so user friendly and uh, it just doesn't seem like a race car. Whereas like before when you bought like, let's say a, a 2007 Subaru WRX sure, STI. Yeah. Hawkeye, blah, blah, it's blah, like, blah, guys. Yep. For sure. It's like you, you obviously are a car guy because you have to make sacrifices mm-hmm. driving that car. You know, it's going to ride stiffer. It's going to uh be loud and you know it's whereas in the new ones are just like so luxury it's kind of just they, they've put too much technology into it where it dates it immediately in five years that too it's also too they just don't look as cool either but uh and you see them all over it used to be hard to get them but i mean we're always scrolling facebook marketplace just saw like a 2015 wrx for 10 grand yeah, I'm like, that's what like they, they the dropped. old ones are going for Shit. Yeah. yeah no one wants those ones no one wants those ones, but uh, yeah, I'll I'll still, dude. I still like the the twenty two plus the new ones. They came out. They still do have Honda Civic taillights, um, but like now people are modding them. I think they're cool. I but still think they're ugly. I'm a Subaru boy, so same. I'm I'm that was like my first love. 
for cars. If I, I feel like every generation of Subaru, they just get uglier and uglier, and people <laughs> just like trick them themselves into thinking this is a cool looking car, but it's always like the last one was better looking, and then yeah. they come up with another one, and the last one was better. To be fair, they've always been looked at as ugly cars, though. Like I remember reading things like articles on them, and they'd always say like they they drive great, but just can't really get used to the looks huh. like most guys don't like the looks i mm. would just say they they can't do much like worse them. than that 08 they yeah, can't do much worse <laughs> that was than, pretty bad than that the non, narrow non, body yeah, the narrow body like it, it that's truly like no one wants those you get those for a hell of a deal but yeah. you guys see they tore down the fantasy factory what what yeah Wait, what? yeah like was, the warehouse the warehouse and everything in it just just recently what? They'd still Why? been all intact. No, it, it was, wasn't. It was not. They still had everything like the in the skate. fantasy factory still there. It, yeah, so that's I've, even crazier. What? Than I found a YouTube could, video on it. I can get that if like the skate park and the offices weren't in there, or whatever, in the foam pit. I'm like, pretty sure I thought they took everything out because Rob Deerdick was paying so much, and they weren't filming for the show anymore. So he obviously stopped, and then. But they then. Sorry, I blacked out. It was already. Seven years ago that they tore it down. Oh. 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 <laughs> Wait. I thought it was, I I thought it was two years ago. The whole eight, building? So. Oh, my gosh. This is kind of weird. Is Wait. Who took office? this video? California Skate Parks. Wait. So they just kind of have like a little time lapse of it being taken down. But it's so crazy because in some of these shots, you can see and like remember the sets. Oh, yeah, like yeah. The, totally. the skyline over there and it. stuff like that. All like, look it. at that. Just, uh, I'm glad they got to have a little fun, I guess, damn. destroying it. That's what we would have done. Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly that what Rob? we would have done. No. Just throwing the hammers through the windows. Sick. Gosh, that office was the coolest. It Literally was. the yeah. coolest. But isn't that crazy that, like, if I was ever in the area, I'd probably pay 10 bucks to tour that. Oh, absolutely. And if I was a skateboarder, I'd probably oh, pay, yeah. I'd pay 50 to skate it. Skate it. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they weren't able to make a something, something out of it. But, like, after us building a shop, and, you know, kind of like doing all the things where we're trying to mix a useful space yeah. and also having something that looks really cool on camera. This place is nuts. They had a fake tree house in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. It, when I look at that, it makes me like, how could we put a, a tree inside our shop? Yeah. You know, cool. especially with like, so this week we will be unveiling our farm, mm -hmm. uh, which has been in the process for the last, what, six, six months, months being yeah. built. It's not completely done, but it is like 90 percent, 90, 90, yeah. 95 percent. And uh, so we're going to we're going to be like doing the reveal of it, showing you guys we, we need to do that because we're going to be building a new truck inside the following week. So oh, we're like, we got to base. Oh, that's why we're doing oh, it. It's kind of like dang, we're doing but, it already. But no, yeah. that makes total sense. Wow. A lot of exciting stuff. Dude. Yeah. We, I mean, we've been in there. It looks so good. You it guys. looks amazing. You guys are gonna love it. It's it's a little bit different than previous than this shop, but it still ties all together, and uh, it's gonna be great for for making new builds. Basically, yeah. that's what we kind of tailored like, it for. And, and there was a ton of stuff that we wish we could have done here that we got the opportunity yeah. to do there. You know, yep. just just better lighting, better tools, better equipment, mm -hmm. more offices. That's All just that. expansion. It's it's just way nicer than honestly this this shop. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it higher is. ceilings. I know a lot of us like, stairs. are you going to move your office over here? Nicer and I was should, like, but no, yeah, but no, uh, we won't. I've been asked that so many times, and I used to say, oh no, definitely not. Home base here, here, here. No, we're yeah. keeping this home base. And then, and we still are, but so now whenever I'm nice over there, I'm like, dang, this is nice. I know all the new guys are getting, yeah. getting the better offices. Yep. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. We already got two of them filled up. It's been weird because like the farm has kind of come together behind the scenes. Like when we redid this, mm -hmm. we were, they were working over top of us. Mm -hmm. Literally. Yeah. We're like trying to make the video. We were doing happen. little updates along the way. Yeah. Which and, was cool. But this one, we were, were doing it all at once. We were also think too. I just now you sparked my memory on that. We were working around them as well. Like that was yeah. a chaotic time. I'm pretty excited about this one, fellas. Today's episode is sponsored by Liquid IV. I've been drinking Liquid IV for a long time, and having more of it around the shop has been huge for us. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, all in a single sugar-free stick. Whenever I'm feeling thirsty, I go grab a water bottle, pop a Liquid IV in, and I know I'm doing myself a favor by staying hydrated, and I'm also curbing my cravings for a pop because 
because the flavor of liquid IV is so good. I love that liquid IV replaces sugar with a proprietary amino acid allulose blend. Allulose is a naturally occurring sweetener with the same sweet taste and texture that you can expect from table sugar, but yet it's way healthier for you. However you hydrate, grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code wide open at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code wide open at liquidiv.com. Thanks, Liquid IV. We were like trying to edit while they're cutting stuff. We're trying to build, you know, yeah, we're trying to work on stuff and they're like, you know, they're using the table saw and we're like, hey, we got to have, you got to be quiet for 10 minutes so yeah. we can film this like portion. Like it was an interesting time. So it's nice to have that separate. But I'm so excited to have that part of our shop. Like, it's just going to be, I was over there. It's so dialed. There's just, there's airlines ran everywhere. All the lessons. Ventilation. Ventilation and stuff like that. All the things that we learned with what we need in this shop are now put into place over there. Yeah. And now that it's done, we've probably already outgrown it. Yeah. (laughs) Honestly, though, like seeing the Fantasy Factory, I would love to integrate more stuff, but. Honestly, he just had a way bigger facility. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, need a was warehouse. Like, our shit is going to be full. Like, it's already full. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's got to be functional for, for doing these builds. The price of the build was, uh, we could probably tell it, couldn't we? A little podcast exclusive. I think we've got, what? It'll go, it'll go live. Yeah, it'll go so, live too. that. Yeah, it was a $400,000 remodel process. It was insane. I, we, we, we all are surprised. It's just like Mike Subaru, dude. You start and you're like, wow, we're going to fix this wall. We might as well fix mm-hmm. all the walls. Yep. And yep. before it, you know it. Is that even the all-in price? Because Yes, still that's 100%. Receive, that's 100% that's, of the that's all-in the, price. That's the re- remodel price, yeah. So that's not including what we paid for the building. But uh, True. But, and the land. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the boys have been uh, taking some... Not even pay cuts. We just haven't been paid. Yeah, for like just three took months. A couple months. Hundred percent paid. <laughs> we just haven't been paid for like three months. But that's what it's that's like what, the, yeah, it's what that's it takes. part of. I mean, we've done that so many times though in this process of operating this company. Yeah, like I mean, for the first few years, we weren't getting paid at all. Yeah, and because uh, everything was, you know, the little bit of money we were making, we were just putting back in, and then we started getting paid just a, t- a tiny bit, and then. Uh, we had another situation happen where we basically had to basically invest and, and, uh, you know, we had lawsuits and shit and we had, no one was getting paid. So, I mean, this isn't really anything new to us. There's been many times where we've done that, but that's why, I mean, it just comes with being a business owner. hundred percent. You gotta, you gotta be willing to ride out some hard times. Like, honestly, it's, it's not necessarily as luxurious or, or, uh, there isn't a lot of luxury to owning and starting a business. No. Like you have to take a lot of uh, hardships, I'd say with it, you know, to actually get it to the point where everyone then thinks it's a big luxury. A hundred percent. But uh, that's why you got to save your money, spend it, uh, you know, wisely. wisely. It's just all, it's all part of the, the planning and the journey. And we all look at that and we go, damn, yeah, I mean, it's tough, but like we're excited to have that space to use. We know it's going to help the company in the long mm-hmm. run. Like, it's good. We've always been yeah. willing to invest. And like we got them. that double whammy though, too, because this this bill came right as the same time we had to pay for taxes. Yeah, dude, taxes are dumb. I mean, it was just a real tough, <laughs> <laughs> tough pill to swallow for us. It was a kick in the nuts, man. That was a I'm kick in the like, nuts. I, it stresses me out, dude. Taxes have always been kind of dumb, but you know, the more you make, the more you get taxed. And then now that we're kind of moving towards uh, some of those brackets, it's uh. It's just saddening. Yeah, I thought... It's just bummer. Damn taxes, dude. That's mm-hmm. why I'm moving to Greece. Talked about it before. Moving to Greece. There's lots of places you can go to avoid taxes. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just going because it's cheap to live there. and Okay. Like, I'm kind of trying to live my whole, like, Mamma Mia type dream, you know? I live see it. With the bay <laughs> right. in the background. I'll I mean, befriend a, a couple honestly, people with Honestly, you and would fit in really well out there. I could see you wearing, yeah. like, a striped, Linen, like, Linen shirt. Yeah. Shirt. Dude, and then, like, out there, I think being fat is still cool. Like, I'd get the big Greek belly hanging out, it. and I'm all tanned. I just waddle you around. drink as much beer as you want. Going. Exactly. Yeah, maybe. Fuck it. Oh, I'll you, get you a chain. Would, you would need I a chain. I would love to see you in a chain. You would need a chain. I just... I, I could see you in a little gold chain, man. Really? Just like a four millimeter, like, you know, very small, mm-hmm. and just like a little gold one, like a rope chain. I, I went like shopping I in the Mall of America this week, and I just, I just became so acutely aware, one, of my deteriorating health, and two, of just yeah. how much little swagger i have 
I just was like, damn, there's all these people in the mall and they're buying all this cool stuff and they're all looking cool. You got to get swag. And then I look at me and I'm just like, damn, like, cause there's mirrors everywhere. You're just like constantly in a mirror and it's like me. And then this really cool looking dude. I think you're being too hard on yourself. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, Yeah, the amount of people that I actually think like have swagger is like pretty small. Yeah. There's not a lot. I don't have much. I don't have any swagger at all. In fact, you want (laughs) to know how much it costed to be swaggered like this? See this chain? About 50 Swaggered. bucks. Guess how much this chain cost it? 70. $45. It was $14. Oh. Ooh, $14 damn, and my girlfriend bought it for me. Wow. Here's what you can't be. A chain that is that cheap and doesn't make your neck itchy and doesn't turn colors. It doesn't, you get it I just wear it all the time. Skin green. Yeah, when I, mean, I was a kid, I always wore like, it was like those like Shaka necklaces. Yeah. It was like in style back then. I'd always get a Yo, new one. I know it. I know it wouldn't be smart, but I I thought about like just bringing it back. Yeah, well, one of those surf necklaces with the shark tooth. Yeah, well, I would probably know shark tooth because then you're like, look at me, look at my shark tooth. Necklace. I went to the Bahamas on vacation. Yeah. I think we're just maybe we we've, we've lost a little bit of touch with style. You know, we're out of the scene. We we kind of stick true. to ourselves. We just do our own thing, and now it's like we got. Uh, this young man, Dalton, who we hired on, he, he does all of our photography and makes like the awesome edits of like the Ram giveaway. And he's a, a young 18 year old man who's got a lot of swagger and style. He's in touch. <laughs> he was filling me on, like he helped us get the suits. Like he picked out the, the suits and stuff for wow. us when we went shopping because he was like, you got to do this and this, so like funny. make us look, you know, baller. I mean, he was telling me about his chains. He's got like Cartier chains and shit that cost like a thousand bucks. I'm like, dude, this thing was 14. 14. Really? What the hell are you doing wearing a thousand dollars? Yeah, chain? how much are we paying you? Well, he had all this. Well, before yeah, us. I was like, and I also before think us, the but. chain chain is one thing though. Like that's like if you spend fourteen hundred bucks one. on like any chain, like you spend fourteen hundred bucks on chain. But I do agree, like he's. I, I will, we're, okay, so, so we're, maybe he'll, he'll no, swag us we're, out. We're gearing up for summer gear, so we're, we're going to you know make some swim trunks, some shorts. And then Dalton's like, oh, you got to hit the 5.5-inch inseam. <laughs> I don't and even I, know what I, that means. I, I just, it means really short, and I just Bro, got no done. no chance. I'm I, yeah, sorry I just that, got Dalton. done relaying to uh, no chance. Uh, people we were working with, and I was like, yeah, biggest thing is like, got to shoot for that eight. They can't be too short, like our audience. Oh, no. Like, and it's just funny. And then he's like, "Yeah, they gotta be five point five, super short." And I just bought a pair of five point fives. Kind of took your advice. I ain't got the legs for Bro, that. Ken, <laughs> if Ken that was wearing those things, his his balls would be hanging out both, both sides. sides, dude. Not even one. Both it sides. Just, yeah, he, yeah, he looks good. It's huh? crazy how shorts have gone up in uh, shortness. Like, like, yeah. and and I just remember, like, my mom would go and like to Kohl's and get me a, a pair of shorts, and I'd. I'd Try them on like if they were above. Mom, I can see my shins. I can see my shins. I can't wear these. I remember I bought a pair of shorts. I, it was when they were still like super long, and it was like an eight inch inseam. And you guys roasted yeah, me I for having that. <laughs> and then a year later, everyone's having <laughs> yep. eight. Ken was yeah. ahead of the style, dude. There no. was just something about it. But uh, about every, I still remember like getting after my mom. Where, like if she bought me a snapback hat. A oh. snapback hat Why? at one point because think remember like Rob Deerdeck big black times I had yeah, a big black just, hat and it, it was fitted fitted fitted, yeah. fitted 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 if it right. had a snapback it was it was not right and then I'm like what is this hood or what is this sweatshirt without a hood I ain't wearing that yeah. crew neck like I was against I still crew neck uh yeah just stuff like that yeah shorts that like showed your knees I'm like dude these are not long enough but oh, it's man. funny it always comes around like I guarantee like yep. my our dads wore short shorts like in the yeah. 80s that was short mm-hmm. shorts now you get to now they're back to being short mm-hmm. so yeah just keep your shit and hang on to it and then it'll be in style give to, it another 10 years and they'll be back below the knee yeah to be fair though I don't think our looks have any uh impact on whether people watch our videos or no, not. No, hundred percent. I don't, I don't do it. I just, you know, it's just yeah. like a thing. I just was like walking around. I was like, man, I look like such a squid. Well, you <laughs> know, Ryan, I think that's part of your, you that's know, part why, of me. Why no, people love you. That's part yeah, of I, was me. Like, I think that's why people love you. We don't have fashion, but yeah, like we're doing, I think we we're doing fas- just fine. We fashion. I don't that's remember a- the last time I actually shopped for clothes or anything in a store. Everything I just buy is online. Mm. Well, that's because it takes extra work to do that. Well, I, I just never make it to a store, though. What are you saying there, Mike? I'm saying Ken. Well, we. Oh, I was. Ken usually takes the easiest path to whatever he needs. Ken, what's something you've recently simplified in your life? Ken's the master of finding the easiest way to get something done or not doing it. What's something you've recently simplified that used to be a challenge? 
a great question. I don't even know. His whole life's automated, man. Yeah, I mean, you got the automated shades. You've got uh, your car drives itself. The lights turn on when you drive into the house. Yeah, but I, I did that years ago. I mean, he's so automated. Motor, he's motorized, so automated. He's motorized he's can't motorized automate shades are nice. Oh, hundred percent, dude. I want them, but I'm just saying like, what, what's something that has now become even more automated in your life? I, I don't think I've changed a lot in the last, I don't, yeah, probably like two years. To be honest, I don't think you have either in, yeah. in, in, in a good way, like super consistent, just like pretty streamlined. You're so automated. There's nothing left to automate. Yeah. What's like the hardest thing you've done recently, Ken, physically? I mean, moving around boxes of merch. Yeah, so okay. many boxes. Fair. I mean, that's a maybe uh, riding that that bike that hasn't. It's an used. electric oh. bike. It's an electric <laughs> assisted bike. It was also ten degrees outside with a like a twenty mile an hour north wind, and I was in nothing. Yeah, in tight. <laughs> well, Ken, I thought I I think it was a good you know start. We're gonna get you an actual like bicycle, like a cycling road bike. Just like Lance Armstrong. I yeah. see hey, you got I the start riding to work. Might yeah, be but fun to do occasionally, but not regularly. I agree, but like could be a little waste of money considering those Himaway bikes we got are electric. And no, I would but rather Ken's doing it because he wants to become the next Lance Armstrong. Didn't Lance Armstrong have a thing with his balls too? Maybe they got small because of steroids. He, right he had the opposite of what Ken had. Well, actually, well, he had, he had cancer. cancer. I'm sure. Oh, never yeah. mind. Sorry, yeah. Lance. So not good, but uh. <laughs> was it was it him that got like? Called out for doping or something? Yeah. 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 Ken starts doping so he can ride his bike to work. Would be insane. <laughs> He's just trying to make that easier. He starts <laughs> physically pedal biking, so he starts using steroids to assist him. <laughs> He's like, how could I make this easier? <laughs> <laughs> starts using <Let's> steroids. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Speaking of just maybe maybe not being cool. Uh, oh. Well, I posted this, this like carousel of pictures on Instagram the other day. And in, like, one of the pictures, it's us in Vegas. Me and Gavin were, like, having fun walking. And I'm drinking a Bud Light. Oh, yeah. That, oh. And I was getting a kick out of that. Uh, yeah. The I was comments. getting, like, kind of ripped in the comments. Like, it was, really? like, partially. Like, some people were ripping me. Some people were defending it. And then Mike hops in and starts ripping. On, like, he's not even on my side. Starts, he yeah, hopped I, on oh. their side. Hey, I didn't rip oh. on you, but, yeah. No. He just said, damn, CJ drinking a Bud Light. Didn't know you guys were like that. And oh. I said... Don't bring he said me not into cool. He yeah. said not oh, yeah. cool. I said, don't bring me into this because he said you guys, and then it got a bunch of likes. But I, <laughs> it is it is very interesting that you post 10 pictures, and in one of those pictures, it wasn't just you. It's a blurry bottle it, in the back. It wasn't the only. Yeah, it was literally a blurry bottle, like kind of like far away, and people just were like, I, you know, my, crazy. my question is like, where do you guys stand on this? Like, t- this is, I'll let you guys go first. Listen, man. I don't got to tell nobody my favorite beer, right. but well, I think I I think people got to get over that. It was it yeah. was like a it was one can. I it agree. wasn't a whole I thing. Agree. There, I think I think life people should just kind of move You're on. You know, hold on to it forever. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I wasn't drinking it during the time of that, but yeah. then like you know, we were in Vegas and the ladies like, "What do you want?" And she just had a Bud Light. I was like, "I'll just take the Bud Light." Yeah, it tastes great, and I'd drink another one. I didn't like Bud Light to begin with, so my opinion did not change. So you're mm. still not riding with I, them. I still don't like Bud Light. Oh, yeah, yeah but that's, I just that's taste related. I just don't like, well, taste, and then it also, like, it kind of makes me feel weird. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I genuinely don't <laughs> care. I just get such a kick out of it. Like, I, I'm not, like, yeah, I'm not going to make anyone boycott it, and I'm not even boycotting him. I, I just think it's so funny, but... You you had a great comment back. You're like, well, I think they moved past it. Like they double. I mean, what are you gonna hold they, on to it forever? They, they, they double yeah. down. It's been around forever, dude. They, like they doubled down on sponsoring Shane Gillis and Post Malone, and I love them. So yeah, exactly. And also, they work with uh, the UFC now. Like in my opinion, Bud Light's cooler than ever. If they're working with the UFC, like they're the official sponsor. That's a huge deal. If Dana White can can move past it, I can too. Yeah, exactly. And you I guys, mean, also, I got a lot other, a lot bigger things to worry about than the type of beer I'm drinking. If it's cold and, and it's in front it, exactly. of you, go for it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's in a nice bottle. You Eventually, guys see, you got to move on. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not agreeing with what they did, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys see? Speaking of the UFC, did you guys see the new Roadhouse movie? Yeah, I watched I really it. I thoroughly it. enjoyed it. I loved it. It was filmed very interestingly. 
Yeah. I thought like when I watched it, I was like, this is it this seemed is like weird. more of a lower budget. Yeah, it was kind of interesting, but it's like why not low budget. I like it's not, but it, it I'm sure they put money elsewhere, but yeah. Yeah, I yeah just, like getting Connor McGregor and Post dude, Malone in it. Yeah. I also sick. just loved like yeah, the the plot doesn't go super deep, but like it's just like Connor McGregor the is so funny. The only reason I watched it was because Connor McGregor was in it and honestly Bob Bennery too. Yeah. I, I fucking that, Bob, that guy's a nutcase, but I honestly <laughs> I like him. I think he's funny. Sam. He is an absolute nutcase, but I, I Man, if you guys ever want to see someone like get ripped in the comments. Yeah, that guy gets ripped, but Man. he just keeps getting up every day and going yeah, back to it. It's like he just, just does takes the punch. St- that guy does something stupid every day, but I think that is what makes him so entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that movie was a remake of like an Eight, 1988 movie. Yeah, it's an old movie. Gotta watch that one. I thought Conor McGregor was a pretty good actor, though. I did, it? too. I saw a bunch of stuff on, like, TikTok, and it was, you know, like, a guy playing the director and then a guy playing Conor. Like, just loosen up, man. You know, like, just, all right, you're gonna walk in the scene and look around. And then he, like, imitates Conor. But I think Conor being over the top is, like, what made the movie. Yeah. He's over the top and everything. Exactly. I was, like, I was chuckling the whole time. And, like, Alondra doesn't really know Conor McGregor. She didn't care. She's, like, who the fuck is this guy? And I'm, like, laughing because he just is so <laughs> outrageous. Like, he, like, when he walks in, where yeah, the fuck is everybody? Yeah, that's literally <laughs> probably how he acts in real life. It's so funny. Yeah, it was good, though. I, I liked it. I liked it. It's on Amazon fr- Prime for free. Can't beat can't, that. Yeah, but I did see in that... That like they they filmed some of it during a UFC fight that we watched, but in the background of it, like Prime is on the ring and stuff like that, and I was like, crazy. I wonder if Prime had to pay for that. Like you have to pay sure. for advertising oh, that ends up back sure, in the movie. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, it probably would have been harder for them to unblur it because I remember when they filmed that scene, it was at a regular UFC yeah, event, it was a real UFC, and event. they just were like in between fights, and they like played this song and had Jake. Uh, Jill and all come out. And I think like the crowd was kind of like, what the fuck what is, is going, going on? on here? Cause like they were playing it like it was actual. And they did like the guy, uh, putting, you know, vast greasing them up. And, uh, he like goes in so there it and it's like, like this it fake real. fight. And like, I, they, they must've had to put like the sound effects of people cheering and use different shots from far back in order to make it look real. Cause I remember seeing like, you know, iPhone footage from people in the crowd. Everyone's just silent. Like what the fuck is going on? Cause there's these two guys like fake fighting in the ring and they like made him come out. Not to mention. <laughs> and then between, like the ref comes and grabs him and he pushes the ref. Everyone's and he like, comes back and fakes on? beat him up. But like, dude, it's between two real fights. It's not like watching it. Just like if you were hired to come there and watch the fake fight, you go, wow, this is pretty entertaining. But it's between two real yeah. fights. So you, just, you didn't show up to a WWE event. Yeah. You're, like, you're at an actual, you're like, what is going on? The last two I saw really beat the shit yeah. out of each what other. What is Jake Chillenhall doing out here? Air punching this guy. I mean, I, yeah. I get why. And they made yeah. it look good in the movie, but it had to be really weird watching yeah. it in real life. Dude, I mean, UFC is killing it. Like, they're in everything. 300 this weekend, I think. Jake Dylan yeah. Hall, chilling in the hall, waiting for the call to come out for his brawl. Damn, Mike. I don't know. Where did that <laughs> come from, brother? <laughs> that was good. That was good. Oh, that's funny. So I got to reverse back a little bit. So uh, off the topic of Bud Light, Gavin told me the other day that you were going sober, Mike. Yeah, for two weeks, yeah. Two weeks, yeah. no alcohol, no anything else? Just alcohol. Okay. Why? Wow. What was uh, the thought process? Yeah, let's for that? let's hear the story on Sydney this. Sydney just didn't think that I could do two weeks, and I was like, I think I can. Yeah, and then that's it. So I was like, Well, I mean, really? I know I can. Yeah, obviously. So, so when did you start? Wednesday. Nice. So you're five days in, four days in, something yeah. like that. So you started to think straight. <clears throat> think the same. I did. Uh, I can't. I think it was like sixty-five days, no alcohol, in like. Last fall. Yeah, that's why I was like, I mean, is this even worth talking about? Like, Ben's been sober for, like, six months now. Like, it's well, crazy. I mean, it's, it's interesting for yeah, people, you know. I think. Like, yeah. I was just, I was hoping for more of a backstory on it. I think the hardest part is, of that is just where we are and, like, the surroundings. Like, we go to Utah. I, w- I wouldn't drink in Utah either because I'd be wanting to drive, like, drive things and go mountain biking and, like, do all these fun things. But it's really tough here when you wake up. It's 42 degrees, windy and yeah. cloudy out this morning. It's like, well, what do you want to do? Oh, well, let's go bowling. It's like, mm-hmm. well, if we're going to go bowling, might as well have a beer. No, that's where, yeah, that's where it's hardest for me is just, like, burger and a beer. Yeah. And now it's just, like. I get that. It was I, a burger and a soda know, Dr. Pop. Pepper ain't so bad. No. But lately, uh, like, I only drink maybe once a week, if that. And I probably won't drink this weekend. Um, 
Well, maybe I will. I'm going over to hang out with Grandpa Ron after this, <laughs> spending the Saturday with him. Um, <laughs> but oftentimes nowadays when I'm drinking, let's say we go out to dinner and I have like three drinks or four drinks. Like I kind of walk out of there and I'm just like, that was pointless. Like I yeah. kind of wish I wouldn't have done that because now I got to like rehydrate and like, you know, it's yeah. just like, it just was pointless. Like it was just extra calories just not hitting hitting like it used to after I've kind of weaned off like you know Ben has too I did mine before Ben but uh no I just feel better too I just yeah. feel great and uh dialed which is a nice That's yeah. surprised to like hear once that you ben get off say, it or Ben said he's like you know I I really like don't necessarily feel I any think because he was forced to he yeah. was forced to when you're forced not to then it's tough yeah. but like for me I kind of just did it by decision, mostly yeah. because I felt like shit, and then you, you add another thing on top, it makes you feel even worse. Yeah, you know, it just it makes it pretty easy to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I I'm pretty happy with it. I just drink caffeine now. God, caffeine is caffeine's tough. the best. I couldn't kick that. I could not ever kick that. I just love getting a good cup of coffee in the morning. Coffee is or like yeah. Free. I think I could cut oh, out like coffee, I could cut out all energy drinks and stuff like that. But like coffee, a good old no. cup of coffee, man. There's some comforting that, about that it. That feels like human. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, comforting to me. It is funny. I look forward to coffee in the morning, it's, even at night. I'm Same. like, damn, I would kill yeah. for a coffee right now. <laughs> it's gets me out of it's bed, freaking, dude. It's freaking like 8 uh, p.m. I'm like, I can't have a coffee. I gotta Literally wait till morning. Did that last night. I was like, dude, a coffee would be so good right now. Yeah, and it'd be a horrible decision. Yeah, every every night I would say I crave the coffee that I'm going to get in the morning. And I've started, I used to make it at home and then have it on my way to work. But then now I just started having it here. So then it gets me to work even faster. So instead of like getting to work at nine or whatever, I'll just be like, all right, I'm going to go there and then get my morning started. Ken, can you search up the uh, benefits of, of caffeine? Or like the side effects too, I, like what's bad. I don't bad, think there are a ton of benefits. Well, obviously it wakes you up. That's a benefit. But I mean, is there is there health? How about how about just coffee? One of like the the side effects for caffeine is like increased heart rate, insomnia, headache, anxiety, irritability, high blood pressure, diarrhea, dizziness, frequent urination, tremors, chest pain. It just goes on and, on and on and on and on. Like it literally just keeps diarrhea. going on and on. And like for me, I <laughs> I've noticed one. like the if I have caffeine, like anything past like. 10 11 o'clock I, I just have a oh a.m oh i was oh, gonna wow. say no really? shit <laughs> I, I just have like a tough time falling asleep like even if it's really it, if it's not right away in the morning it's like it just keeps me i up. don't have any problems with it in fact consumption of three to five standard cups of coffee daily has been consistently associated with a reduced risk of several chronic diseases that's, that's pretty lot, cool though. that's a lot of coffee like that's I was a lot of coffee wait I'm, just two to three cups a day three to five three oh, to five oh, standard shit. cups a lot of coffee. That is quite quite a bit yeah I normally drink probably two I'm trying to figure out what they just they just said it has been led to a bunch of them and then doesn't say any. Hmm. of the positive things I feel like that's one of those things where they have so many different studies out there contradicting each other based on who's paying for it where it's just there's just garbage information all over the place this one's from harvard i feel like there should be so some solid garbage. evidence but for how much everyone loves and drinks coffee there should be some really solid evidence yeah it seems like, like it'd be a or pretty, just like you know like you would just know in a known fact a pretty easy pretty, thing to test that's why god be one of the most popular drinks next to water I would imagine coffee, water, and coffee have got to be yeah. the most commonly drank thing. <laughs> I just wouldn't saw, you say, yeah, one of those corny signs that like uh, uh, you'd hang up in your kitchen. I don't always drink water, but when I do, it's coffee. I'm like, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But then I'm like, well, wa- coffee kind of is just water. water. It says uh, less likely to develop. This is we are an inform a comedy informational. I saw that on something. We're comedy informative. Yeah, that's we, what this uh, podcast yeah. is right here. So I'm I don't so know. Don't take I, this. I'm so uh, glad I have like a genre to tell people now. Yeah. Uh, so don't take this as uh, biblical. But you could live longer. Longer. Uh, could live longer. Yeah. Uh, or you could not. <laughs> or you could not. Less likely to have coronary heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and kidney disease. You may process. I love how it says may in all of these. May process glucose or sugar better. You're less likely to develop heart failure. You're less likely to develop Parkinson's. Your liver will thank you. It's protective for your liver. Yeah. Your DNA is stronger. <laughs> um, your odds of getting colon DNA cancer will stronger. go down. That's a good one. Your DNA. Yeah, my, I'm just making my DNA stronger right now. Yeah. But it, it seemed like there's some there's some benefits. But I notice it with if I have too much caffeine and we get into what would be called a stressful situation, 
I find that I handle it more poorly because I feel like I'm more you're reactive. All, you're all jittery. Yeah, I'm all like juiced up and I don't really realize it, but I am. So I, I try to watch that. Like if we're going to go out and, and do something that really could take a lot of like hoopla, try to not have as much yeah. caffeine. When yeah. I'm editing, I make sure I don't over caffeinate. Cause like sometimes it's just like one of those things where you're like, how can I make this go better? And you exactly. keep trying to drink more and more caffeine, but then it gets to a point where it's counterproductive because you're just sick like, and you're just, just kind of sick. Yeah. That, and then you start making mistakes point. and like, it's not good when you stress. And then when I, when I'm like trying to gear up, okay, we have to, I don't know, we're going to be out filming for the next eight hours. I'll overload on caffeine thinking mm. it's going to help me. And it doesn't it stresses you out more. Yeah. Not even the crash. I think just like the jitters along with the stressful situation makes it worse. Yeah, you mm. just it just ramps up. It can be poor for you. I got a new favorite drifter, a uh, new favorite drift driver. Who's that? Looking up to in the scene. Uh, he goes by the name of T Pain. Oh, he's really? T Pain drifting now. Yeah. I saw he's that. Just, he at this a... point, he's just doing side quests. Literally. I kind of couldn't believe my eyes though. So like he's in like the FD like competition, like the tournament LZ, like the LZ games one? or whatever they're called. Like um, the LZ weekend. I, I'm not sure what it's called, but he's like side to side. I'm like, that's T pain. So he's actually good. He's yeah. He won his like, you know, I think they start with like 18 or 30 division. drivers. No, he was drifting against a, another drifter and he won. He's his a big car guy. Tandem. That's so cool. I was like, that is amazing. That like, is so, so. I did yeah. not expect him to be. Well, he has the have you song seen, with her. Yeah, have you seen yeah. the song, dude? He has a. It's actually a pretty it's lit. Pretty song. lit. Like, you got to be a car guy to really enjoy it. But uh, what's it called? Just let him look it up after, because otherwise it'd get copyright. Baby got brap. Yeah, baby, baby yes. got brap. <laughs> That's what brap, it is. Brap, brap, brap. You got to look it up it's after. It's, it's actually good. pretty good. Um, with the drifting, you've done it, Mike. You know, you you hit, you were struggling at the start because you had a car that was not running. It wasn't operating correctly. Yeah, but I, dude, but, and I was just struggling. Like, I just okay, that so good. that was my question. So now that your car runs good, and I was watching you, you're drifting good. So, so much easier. So my question is, if you have the proper car, is drifting that hard? No. Okay. Mm. I feel like I kind of have, like, came around to, to noticing that. Like, if you actually have a car built for it with an angle kit and all the other stuff it seems like it's it's easier than it looks it's i would like say just like riding a dirt bike as in once you have the clutch like once you know how to drive it you point you, you come up to a berm you point the dirt bike you don't have to be going super it's, fast it's not as tricky as you it come up to the jump looks. and you maybe don't feel comfortable but you know what you have to do and yeah. it's just, it was the same thing. Like, I know how to s swing my wheels out and add gas turn the wheel mm -hmm. and then that's when i started getting pointers from <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the dudes there that knew what they were doing, yeah. they, they'll explain something to you that you would never figure out on your own. Drifting is just drifting, whether you're in a front wheel drive Buick in the snow, like it's the, yeah. it's the principle of swinging your, your ass end out. I mean, but if you don't have a car built with like an angle kit, basically, basically angle just kit an does angle seem kit to help a lot for actual drifting. Yeah, yeah. Like he couldn't yeah. link a whole course in his Camaro because, right. you know, I but can't turn. It's, yeah. It seems like drifting, the sport of drifting is growing. Like yeah. I, I, it's kind of boring to watch, in my opinion, but I think it's really fun to do, and and I've just done it a little in the Miata. I thought the same thing. It's like when you're there watching it, it's boring. it's pretty hard to like get into. You you might see one dude that like got super close to the wall, and then you're like, yeah. But when you know that you just got to hop in your car and then hop in line to mm -hmm. go do that, then it makes it way more exciting. Yeah, and I mean, it lasts longer than just doing a drag run. Definitely yeah, better. You kind of like watch where people were like, okay, this guy initiated at this point. Yeah. Maybe I can yeah. uh, try and take a pointer from that. And yeah, and I think uh, drifting at its simplest level with the right stuff is pretty easy. But dude, some of those guys aren't doing insane. actually See, linking. The I'm the talking linking freaking, the course. Yeah, like actually doing just, the just course, going around, linking it. Like you're drifting this corner, then you flop and drift it to the other way. And they're staying like, you're like not just in, doing a little like. Like it's a ninety yeah, degree like a turn slide. and you slide. And they're staying it, yeah. like inches away from that wall the whole yeah. time. Like I think that's sick. It's like and it, it's like again the difference between like jumping a jump on a dirt bike and just whipping the shit yeah, out of it and it. then like railing a berm. Like it's yeah. it's like a lot of sports. It's easy to get to that fifty percent level. Like he's doing it, and then to get to the ninety nine percent level, a hundred percent agree. You got to work for you. I, I mean, when 10 you years. see the guy going like eighty miles an hour and then rips the e brake and he's like going backwards yeah, into the dude. corner. Like, like that's, that's just stuff's nuts. gnarly. That's yeah. just gnarly. That's There's, just believing I, in yourself. If I do it, I want to get a uh, a C six Corvette and do it with that. I think that'd, that'd be, be so that'd be gnarly. Otherwise, I'd maybe I'd probably have to do like a three fifty Z just because that's iconic. 
But yeah. I feel like I can't have two Nissans. Two. Like, then it's just like, <laughs> You're bro, just a well, Nissan like, guy, I don't know brother. if I necessarily want to be a Nissan guy. I just like the GTR, and I do like the, the 350 and 370Z. But it's like, at what? Like, if you I get could, another one, could. it's like, yeah, he just. Bro, like, I he's, would he's got a bunch of Nissans. It's just not not what I really want to be. Bunch of Japanese cars. So. I mean, a Japanese is fine, but a ne- I just don't want to be a Nissan guy. Dude, a handful of the guys at the track, they weren't even like shitting on my car. They were just like, you know, they're talking about taking the turbo off, making it easier to drive. And they were like, dude, just get it. They call it a missile car. Just get a missile car. Sad. Like, just get another 350Z, just like a stock 350Z. And I'm like, bro, I don't think I can handle the flack that I'll get. <laughs> like, if I really rolled up with like a, another another th- a car? drift car, people would be like, dude, this guy is losing it. No, like, I wouldn't. Yeah, had, I'd be pumped if you did that, Mike. <laughs> I love it when you buy stuff. <laughs> I do too. I, it's Keep buying so stuff, entertaining, dude. dude. And so then, of course, like I'm actually like legit looking. I'm like, well, some of these, you know, if you look from not around here, you can pick up a, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars for a drift ready 350Z. It's pretty cheap, honestly, but, to get in the game. Mm-hmm. Just daily drive it too. Yeah, like the one that Jake's uh, borrowing from Buddy Cody is. So beat up, so bad. They're bulletproof. Yeah, That's yeah, what you yeah, need, dude. It, it literally is bulletproof. And everything. Isn't that yeah. the car that like people get passed around, where this guy will learn how to drift in it, and yeah. then it'll get you past like the like next the town guy bike? Yeah, yeah, it's like so. Everybody gets a ride. Dented, but like the motor and the clutch are just chilling. Stock clutch. Really, it's, it's crazy. Wow, yeah. that's actually pretty impressive. But that's what you need. Just a good beater. But also, yeah. fuck it. No, I said make it. yours into a new into the beater, dude. <laughs> I do, that's the thing. I don't want to do that. Since it's Here's chilling nice. at at a nice stage, like I don't want to do that. But the that plan thing's is, so pretty too. Yeah, he they make these Kevlar uh, fenders and doors that are like you can just fold them up and bend them. And I'm like, that's what I need. Oh, yeah, your sick. shit's like, all jacked up after Jake, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, dude. And then when we you ran, didn't latch your hood and it blew up, <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious, like, dude. Your car is the gift that keeps dude, on giving. One of those situations <laughs> where like I couldn't really be that mad at him because like all he did, hilarious. all he did was forget to like latch the one latch and like the hood blows up blows right up. after it. But then it destroys the it destroys my quarter, quarter panels, panels and, and the hood and, we're and the windshield. Yeah, the windshield has a little crack, but um, then we're at the track, and he he's like, all right, he starts my car up, like, we're going to load it up. I'm like, you can just load it. You can just load it, like, if you want, whatever, and I was taking a Snapchat instead of guiding him onto the trailer because, like, the car's not that wide. You got, and then he just, like, he's looking at the left. He's got, like, a foot on the left, and he's just grinding the the wheel, and I'm known for curbing my wheels, but for some reason, all the wheels on my drift car were immaculate, which oh. is just like... It was bound to happen. Yeah, bound to happen, but then he curbs, like, just that shaves sucks. off the outer ring on the trailer fender. One of those situations where I'm like, Damn. I mean, I'm not going to make you buy me a new rim, but, but also I'm sad. like, just bombed. God, you guys. Well, I got I to gotta go take a leak. It was a good time. I'm going to go take a leak, go hang out with my grandpa Ron for the day. I'll, uh... Yeah, good luck not drinking. <laughs> yeah, we might have to have a yeah, couple beers. Yeah, yeah might as well. With Grandpa Ron. He, yeah. yeah, he's watching uh, basketball. He's, he's uh, you know, just oh, love college sports. So fella. I'm going over there to go do, go do that with him. So anyways. Well, you take it easy on you guys as well, huh? Try not to get into too much trouble. <laughs> See you next time. Don't let you meet love. <laughs>